Okay, so let's make a start. My name is Mary O'Brien and I'm a consultant at One Spatial, specialising in the FME product set. So today I wanted to give you an introduction to the FME server product. Um, if you've got any questions as we go through it, if you can add those to the chat window and we'll deal with them at the end. Okay, so here's what I'm planning to cover. It should be about, about 40 minutes. We'll start with an introduction to One Spatial and Safe Software. Then we'll look at the FME server product and an overview of the architecture and explain how it all works. Then we'll take a tour of the FME server interface and I'll explain the services and the capabilities it gives us. And then we'll finish up with some examples that demonstrate the functionality. So let's start with a little background. FME is produced by Safe Software, who are based in Vancouver on the west coast of Canada. And they have a network of partners across the globe with resellers in lots of countries and a very active user community. And here at One Spatial, we've been an FME reseller for for quite a while now and we provide support for all of the FME products. We have a team of skilled FME people so we can help you with any of, F any of your FME related questions or any problems you might have. We provide training so both public and private courses, uh, support through our support portal and consultancy services on the FME product set. So if you're interested or if you're having any problems in getting started with FME or getting the most from your FME workflows, then please do get in touch with us at fme at onespatial.com and I'm sure we can help. So for those of you that are new to FME, just a, a brief explanation. FME is a really powerful data manipulation tool that allows you to connect between lots of different data sources. So building your logical processes to analyze and transform your data to add value and intelligence. And you can automate those processes so that it's easily repeatable. And there are a number of FME products. You've got FME Desktop, that's the main tool where you build your logical business processes to manage your data. Then we have FME Server, and that gives you the ability to run those same processes at the enterprise level with multiple engines processing data in parallel. And that's what we're looking at here today. And then we have FME Cloud, which gives you FME Server from a hosted cloud environment. So without the overhead of infrastructure and maintenance and so on. And sometimes, this can be an easier way for people to get started with FME Server. You pay for the use of an Amazon machine, which is FME Server installed on it. But whichever product, it's the FME engine that is common to all. So when we build our data workflow in FME Desktop, then that workflow can be applied to the other products as needed. In fact, FME Desktop and Server are very tightly coupled. Desktop is the authoring environment for Server. So you build your logical workflow in the Desktop product, then transfer it to the Server product where it runs on an engine. And Server can have multiple engines. So you can have as many jobs running as you have engines. So you simply add more engines to scale your processing power. You also have options to distribute those engines across multiple machines if you wish, and options to configure a failover architecture for different components. And that's particularly important for its use in production and business critical systems. And it's all accessed and managed, managed <coughs> excuse me, through a user-friendly web-based console so everyone in your business can access and use, this, use it through a web browser. And you can, of course, restrict the levels of control given to different users. 
In fact, you can integrate it with your Active Directory user groups if that's what you want to do. So FME Desktop and FME Server are very closely coupled and we can think of them as a server-client pair. And these are, are the typical roles you might have in an FME Server environment. You have an author who builds the workflows in the FME Desktop product and publishes them to Server, and that's typically an FME Power user. But a user of the system does not need to be an FME user or even a GIS user. They're typically internal staff or members of the public who are using the system through a client application. So sending job requests to FME server from something like Google Earth or a GIS application or from a website. They make a request and receive a result and are often completely unaware that FME server is doing the work behind the scenes. And so the role of a developer is often to build a custom interface for the user. So interacting with the web services and the FME server API to send those requests. And finally, the administrator manages the environment and has complete control. So managing users, engines, resources, and so on. And this is typically a GI or IT specialist. It's important though to realise that, that some users could fulfil any number of these roles. So you could be the administrator, author and user of the system. And in fact, that's a fairly typical scenario in a small organisation or team. So how does it work? Well, there are a number of different components and we'll focus just on the main ones here. We've got FME engines and they carry out the data processing tasks. So they run our workspaces, our data flows as jobs. Then we've got the FME server core and we tend to think of that as the brain. It manages everything. So sending job requests to the engines, handling scheduling of jobs, communicating with the database, and through this FME server API, it communicates with the web services and the clients. And those clients, the things sending requests, they can be our users sending job requests from the server console or Joe Public sending requests from a custom application or website that a developer has built. Or indeed, you can submit requests to FME server directly from FME Workbench from the desktop product. So it's the engines that are doing all the work and we can have one or more engines in our installation and they're always on, always running, waiting for a job request. Each request runs a job on a single engine on a single machine core. So it's very easy to scale. We just add more engines on more cores. How many engines do you need? Well, Really that depends on how many jobs you're looking to run and how long each of those jobs will take. But we can help you with working that out. And licensing is linked to those engines also. So you pay to license each additional engine. And good news, it's no longer using FlexLM license server to manage those licenses. It's now managed internally by FME server. How does it work in practice? Well, let's say, for example, you have two engines available and you receive three job requests. So two jobs will run, one on each of the available engines, and the third will be queued until one of the engines finishes its job and becomes available. So importantly, jobs are not lost. They're queued in the system waiting for an engine. And if you're familiar with FME Desktop, you'll know that your license determines what edition you have, so what formats you have access to. 
This doesn't apply to FME Server. Your server license restricts the number of engines you have, but not what workflows you can run on them. It's the license of your FME desktop that determines this. That's where you build the workflows. So you must have a license for FME desktop if you want to use FME Server. So let's go take a look at FME Server. So the interface has been revised and updated for, for 2017. This is what it looks like. Now we've got all our options in the navigation menu on the left and we've got some shortcuts. Sorry. We've got some shortcuts um, across the top to the most common tasks. And then the main part of the screen is like our desktop with links to recent jobs, favorite workspaces and so on. So let's start by checking the engine and license settings. So here you can license your installation and you can manage the engines. So I've got four here, so let's start using them. Okay. So to run a workspace, I simply choose the workspace from the repository so I'm choosing my test workspace here. I'm running it against the job submitter service to simply run the job. I can optionally send an email to notify me when it's done. Um, and I'm specifying the output location. So when I'm happy, I simply hit run. And there it's running the workspace. It's running that translation process. When it's finished, then I can view some stats about the job and I can access and view the log. So it's very simple to use. Let's run that again. So same workspace, but this time I'm going to run it on the data download service. So I don't get to specify an output location this time. Instead, when I run the, the job, the output will be available as a download link, like so. And that's because I've used that other service, the data download service, um, to run this, this job. So we've got lots of options, as you can see. We've options also for automating when jobs run using schedules. So in my test schedule, I choose when and how often I want this job to run. So here I'm going to run it every two seconds starting from now. So now when I enable that schedule, the jobs will start, um, will start running. So let's go look at those jobs. And here we can see them. So I can see there's uh, three jobs currently running on my engines. And as they finish, they'll get listed in the completed jobs list. You can see them here. So we've got a full record for auditing. And we've got lots of options for managing your FME server here. But I just wanted to give you a very brief overview, how to run some jobs, how to automate it. And I'll just point you also to the documentation and the help, which is available on the bottom left. OK, so now that we've seen what it looks like, what can we use it for? Well, there are three main capabilities. So as, as, we've, as we've just seen, you can use it to automatically run your processing jobs on a schedule, so it's very light touch. You can also use it to offer self-serve data processing, so you or your colleagues can run data processing jobs from a web browser, whether that's the server interface that we've just been using or a custom web page that makes requests to server. 
There's no special skills needed. And you can use its real-time capabilities to respond to events. For example, as soon as a data drop is received, a job could be triggered to process it. And when it's finished processing, an email be could be sent to notify you. So it's really quite, quite powerful. OK, well, give me some examples. What might we use it for? Well, offering something or really anything as a web service. So with cloud computing and web services, the, the trend in the last few years has been to offer everything as a service to users. So you can access software as a service, your Office 365, for example. You can access infrastructure as a service, Amazon and, and Windows Azure. And you've got the likes of Salesforce and FME Cloud, where you can have an application or platform being offered as a service. Everything, it seems, these days can be offered as a service. So, in fact, we've made up a few more, just to help describe some example uses of FME Server. First off, offering data as a service. So giving people the ability to download a selection of data and it's all self-served. So if I pop over to my example, here's a web page where anyone can order data. The background mapping here is Google Maps, but this could be your own web mapping. And we're simply capturing the choices that are made. So I'm going to draw a polygon. I'm going to request some bus layers. Um, I want it in lat long and I'm going to choose to have it as an Esri uh, shapefile for my output. When I hit request, it sends a job request. In fact, this particular data or this particular data request gets sent to FME server. It runs that job and I get a download link over here with the result. So just like we did on the server interface, but here it's sent from a custom web page. So it's completely self-service. The user's happy because he's gotten exactly what he wanted almost instantly. And it frees up your time to do more pressing tasks. Next up, data translation as a service. So here we want to upload, upload one file and get something else back. So here I'm uploading some data files, so my traffic signals. Uh, I specify which format they're in, or it can have FME guess them. I'll choose which format I want as my output, choosing a map info tab here, and whether we want to reproject the data or not. I'll choose not to in this case. So I click Submit, a job runs on FME server, and the results are returned to us as a download link. So just to prove that it's gone and created that file, there's that data. Next example, offering data validation as a service. So let's say my contractors are submitting address data to update my database. Um, and I want to validate it before I accept it. So in this example, we've got some address records that we can see here. And we want to validate maybe just the postcode here. Let's keep it simple. So over to FME Desktop. And remember, Desktop is the authoring tool for our processes. 
we've built this workflow that reads the data, validates the syntax of the postcode, and then makes a request to a free postcode validation service, postcodes.io, to say whether it's valid or not. And then I build a report from the results and write, a, write out a HTML file. Over to server and let's run that workspace. So it's in my demo repository, validate the postcodes publish, and I'm running it against the, the data streaming service. That means the results will be streamed directly to the browser. So, so because it's a HTML format, I can stream it, I can use that data streaming service, and the results, as we see here, are um, pushed back directly to, to the web browser. So that means they're going directly back to my contractor, and then they can clearly see which records have problems that they need to, they need to deal with. So that, that's really pretty cool, and it saves me a load of time with communicating. Um, um, and it's not just external facing we can use some of these services to help us with our day-to-day -day business operations also. So in this example, we're offering a spatial query as a service. And if I go over to my FME server and I go to run a workspace that I've got here called Where Am I? So in this example, if we think of it, you might need to retrieve data based on where your current look on, on your current location. So asking where am I, what's around me, and so on. So here, if you imagine that this has a web front end or maybe a mobile device, and it's simply passing coordinates via the REST API to FME server. So when I enter some grid coordinates which is where I currently am, and I run the job, it zooms me to that location on Google Earth. And when I change locations, so when I make a request again, so changing my location, the job runs again, I get a new result and my that gets streamed directly into Google Earth and the location changes on the map, it updates. So in fact, we could package some of this functionality up into something like an Excel sheet so that anyone can use it. So let's have a look at that. So here, we've just added some hyperlinks for the jobs that we want to run. And of course, you can hide these um, so that they're displayed differently. And here we are again, the same, uh, another job using that workspace, using that service has been run with different coordinates, which now identifies this other location. So it just means anyone can use it. They don't need to have any GIS skills. It's being driven from something as simple as an Excel sheet. And final example, this is using some real-time data provided by Northern Ireland's train service, TransLink. So if I pop over to my FME server. Uh, 
And I've got a process here which um, hits the open API that TransLink have provided. So let's say I'm looking for the next train from Belfast Central to Bangor. So here we've got uh, we've built a workspace that hits that service, that service that TransLink are providing, and reports the next trains listed in the timetable. So it's giving you, you know, real-time location intelligence. Really, really quite powerful stuff. Um, and you know, not only is FME Server helping you automate your work, it can help make sure you get home in time for tea too. How good is that? So really, the possibilities are endless. If you've got data and it needs processing, then FME Server can help in lots of different ways. Hopefully that's given you a flavor of the kinds of things you can do and left you with some ideas to, to think about. But please do come, come and talk to us if you have any questions. And just to finish, the top three reasons customers invest in FME Server, well, the data download service, so being able to automate those data requests and free up your time. It's data upload and validation capability, so using FME as a data sentry for your data stores um, and ensuring your data is top quality. And notifications, so being able to respond automatically to trigger events in real time. And that's it from me for today. Thank you for your time and attention. If there are any questions, please post them and we can take a look.